To begin, I will log into this instance of the vFabric application director. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be using um, the Cluster Dukes Bank application, which I will um, search for as we have many applications deployed. So I'm going to select new and I'm going to change this version to 2.5.0 and save. So once I save this, I can now begin to construct my blueprint. I'm going to create my blueprint. This is a new drag and drop interface where I can easily create new components for my application, my three tiered application, as we saw previously. To begin, I can leverage these logical templates, which represent operating systems and VMs. And I'm going to create a three tiered application, which consists of CentOS systems. So I can create these and start to name my applications. And I can construct my next tier, which will be my app server. And we need a clustered application, so I'm going to create a three tiered cluster. And then my database server. So from here, what I can now do is actually start to deploy my logical services. So from here, I can see all of the different types of services that I have available to me. So for, for my load balancer, I drag and create my Apache server. For my load balancer, I can then add my JBoss for my application server. And from a database perspective, I can add MySQL. Now, once I've added these application services, I can now start to roll out or add in my application components, such as the WAR files or JAR files necessary for this particular application. So I can name this my Duke's Bank app. I can see for the Duke's Bank app all of the default properties that the middleware developer has created for me. And for my database, I'm going to set up an initialization script. Now this initialization script will allow me to instantiate an instance of my database on this MySQL server. Now for actions, I can leverage existing code to set up the initialization or the installation of that database instance. Now that I've saved my blueprint as it stands today, now I can create the dependencies to actually link the applications in my architecture. So I will begin by attaching my load balancer to the Duke's Bank application and linking the Duke's Bank application to this database instance. My middleware experts have provided me um, and the application architects are, have provided me to deploy this application in production, which is what we'll do next. As we can see, my 2.5.0 version of the application that I created is now in my list of application versions. Now what I want to do is deploy this new application into the environment and make it available for users. First step that I have to do with this new application version is create a deployment profile. So I can simply navigate, create my deployment profile. which is my Cluster Dukes Bank application deployment environment. Now what I'm doing here is taking that blueprint and mapping it to a deployment profile or an environment with which I can actually deploy these applications um, live. So I am going to select the deployment environment where I will place these. 
From here, I defined the VM templates that I want to use for the three different tiers of my application, both my app server, my database, and my load balancer. So these are standard VM configurations that the administrators have made available. And I also need to choose the network that I need to use for my load balancer and my application server. And so I will create a cloud direct access network. And now I am ready to move on to the next step, which is looking at the application properties. Now from here, I can look at or make changes to any of the default values that were created within the blueprint. And I'm going to leave these as they are. Now I can look at my execution plan. And of course, the IP address of the systems will be provided into the Apache Load Balancer install. Now I can review the overall plan and what is going to happen. I can look at my blueprint. I can look at my execution plan. And I can also um, look at the actual deployment environment that I'm going to deploy. So now I will deploy and we can watch this process. As the deployment progresses, I can see the virtual machines being created and spun up, denoted by the green checks. I can see that IP addresses are now beginning to be configured and set up as they're being acquired from the network and from the environment. My deployment has created and is now successful. I can review the VM details. I'm going to take note to take down the IP address for the management network cloud for the load balancer so that I can validate that my application is now up and running. I'll open up a new tab. I'm now connecting and I will log in. User 200. And now I can review my application. So my application has now been deployed and is now successfully running. I've been provided a location by my developer for new uh, code for my app server. So what I want to do is select update. I'm going to do a change configuration. I'm going to name this code update, code update for app server. So what I can review during this is define what I actually want to change. So I have all of the pieces available to me. I can review my blueprint again, as we have done in the past. So I can see the different pieces of my application. I can look at the services, whether it's the application server, the MySQL server, or the load balancer. I can also look at the application components within the Duke's Bank application. So what we're going to change is the EAR file location. Development has provided me with a patch to this application server. So I'm going to be able to define that new location for that patched file. Now, once I've provided that new location, I select Next. And I can review the application, uh, the execution plan. Now, I can see for that instance of the application server what is going to be updated. I'm updating the EAR file for the Duke's Bank application. I can view the properties. I can also view the script that will run for execution. I can now review and see highlighted the changes that are going to be executed with this configuration update plan. Once I select update, App Director will now push that code change. Now what I see here at the top are the different milestones for this application. So as I've deployed this application and do configuration change updates. Maybe I'm going to do a scale out or what have you. Each of those steps will be listed as a milestone marker. And at any point in time, I can go back and actually select or view 
any of these milestone markers to see what occurred, what was the execution plan for that step or for that stage to review the history of that application as it's running in a deployed environment. Now that my update was scheduled, it is now in progress, so the system is actually going through and executing that execution plan. So I can see here in the execution plan window that the process of updating the Duke's Bank per the execution plan is in process. Now my code change is successful, and so to verify, I can test my application again, log back in to ensure that it is still up and available. And I can view to ensure that my application is still running.